Okay, so this final part of this section is when we derived Laplace's equation, so Laplace's equation is a partial differential equation that the temperature of an uh, the temperature distribution of an object satisfies um, if that temperature distribution is in equilibrium or steady state. Now, what is still happening? when you're in steady state is there still heat flow from hot to cold and what this little thing that's called the heat flux density and the question is um i suppose the question is uh, can we actually calculate it now w what we what we use to derive the um uh, laplace equation you could probably check it here i won't do it is that the heat flow into this little cell here is equal to the heat flow out and that means that the heat doesn't change and if the heat doesn't change the temperature doesn't change if there was a net increase in heat energy that this temperature will be changing and therefore it wouldn't be steady state okay so what i'm getting at uh here there's there's two different ways to go at this and the first is to use what's this central finite difference thing so it's a way of approximating the derivative the heat flux density is some constant times um now this is a vector and the uh, elements of the vector are the derivatives of temperature with respect to distance along the x and also with respect to y now what i am getting at with this is rather than using the formula you can just do a rise over run situation so i'll show you what i mean by this so if you're talking about the rate of change of temperature in the x direction, you can just do a rise over run with these two, so uh, here and here. Um, now there's a bit of a funny business here about the fact that it's it's a hundred. Um, this was a, a heat source, so potentially there's a possible problem that maybe it makes a bit more sense. Look at thirty nine point two, but we won't we won't do that. We'll see we'll see what we get. Okay, so if you want to approximate the derivative of temperature with respect to x and remember that x is like so you can do rise over run so rise over run just means do the difference between 56.9 minus 51.9 the difference between them and then the run would be 2 twice the delta x now the delta x is just 0 0.1 presumably that's 10 centimeters so it'd be 0 0.2 and you get out some kind of a number here. Uh, let's see what we get. 56.9 minus 51.9 uh, equal to divided by 0.2, which is the same as multiplied by 5 is 25. That's the easy way to do rise over run. Slightly harder is using this little formula. And in this little formula, this is like next, and this is previous, and current is not involved, basically. Okay, so let's let's uh you can do it this way so because you see 56.9 is next uh 51.9 is previous divided by twice delta x delta x we're taking to be 0.1 okay so let's see so this q is a vector i'll give it a little arrow it's equal to minus k dash which is minus 0 0.5 because here you're getting plus 25 um, but of course the heat flows from uh, hot to cold so that's where this minus is coming from it's going the heat is actually flowing in this direction okay so uh, let's do these two derivatives so I won't use this I'll use this so in the x direction rise over run says 56.9 minus 51.9 the run is 0 0.1 0 0.2 and then also do it in the y direction. So that's 57.1 minus 51.8 to get the rise in temperature in the y direction. Let us also just show that. Here's y. Divided by the distance. If it's a square grid and it is here, delta x and delta y are the same, it's also divided by 0 0.2. Uh, we get minus a half. We've already calculated this one to be 25. And then 57.1 minus 51.8 equals whatever. And then we get 26.5. And then we multiply in the minus a half. And so we get uh, minus 12.5. I 
along the x, um, and then 13 minus 13.25 13 along the y. It actually looks a little bit small here. I'm just going to double check this. 57.1 minus 51.8 divided by 0.2. No, it's about the same. I suppose it's close to five, is it? Yeah, it's close to five. Um, and then this is perfectly okay. You could write it in terms of i's and j's. Minus 12.5i minus 13.25j. So that means that the heat flux density here, is, it's roughly kind of going here. It's slightly more along the j, so slightly less than 45 degrees, so maybe something like that. And you should see it flowing from hot to cold, hot, cold. Now 47 to 100, the 100 is a hot spot, so it's it's possibly, uh, it's not realistic to do it with a hot spot. It's actually a boundary condition. Um, but anyway, it's still flowing hot to cold, hot to cold, hot to cold, hot to cold, hot to cold. Otherwise, yeah. That's it. Simple as that. You can use the central finite difference formula, but it's a lot easier just to rise over run.